All right, Paul here. Today we're gonna start the tuning process on the Big Stick Gremlin by old Mr. Bob Smith. And I'm tell you, I played around with it a little bit and for a 56 inch bow, she's very shootable. So I had just some errors laying around that I kind of have shot through it just to, you know, get prepared to kind of get into the tuning process just to see where maybe I would be close to and I'm telling you it's really shootable for a short bow so the first thing I like to do when I get the bows is set up the bow just like I showed you in the first video or the second episode of the bow setup um, once I get that done I get my quiver on the bow that I want full of arrows that I'm gonna shoot uh, that gets my setup to the pretty much the right weight. So the torque and the way the bow is going to react when I shoot is going to be exactly the same. I don't want to tune the bow with a quiver off and then throw a quiver on there because it's going to throw your bow out of tune 100% of the time. Um, some say it don't, but I promise you it does, uh, whether you realize it or not. So what I like to do very first thing is I like to get my draw weight worked out. I want to know exactly how many pounds I'm pulling so I can best guess at what kind of spine arrow that I'm going to need. Um, I've been shooting long enough that I kind of can guess and be pretty accurate with uh, what I'm going to have for a recipe. Um, but even still, it takes a little bit of fine tuning after that to get what you really need to properly get a good tune out of your bow, right? So. I knew that 500s were probably going to be a little weak for this. Um, it turns out 500s were pretty weak, um, more so than I thought. Um, I didn't really realize four pounds of draw weight on a bow made that big of a difference, but golly, it does. <laughs> so 400 spine it was. Um, so I had these Black Eagle Instincts laying around um, that I had already cut a little bit off of for a previous setup that I had. Not much. I think full length, they come 34 inches. Um, I cut off uh, two inches off of them, maybe a two and a half inches off of them. So they're like 31 and a half, roughly, 30, 31 and a half, roughly carbon to carbon. Uh, then you got the little bit of the outsert, which adds a little bit of length, but doesn't really make any kind of bearing on the, the dynamic spine of the arrow. So the inserts or the outserts rather on these arrows are 100 grains. Um, and I don't have any kind, this looks like a wrap, but it's actually paint. So if you paint a wrap on there, like as a wrap would be, so wraps add weight to the back of the arrow, which is gonna change your arrow spine a little bit. Paint doesn't do that because paint weighs literally nothing. It doesn't change the flex of the arrow at all. So that's why I like to go with paint. Um, and I've got four uh, three inch trad veins fletched on here in kind of like an offset left helical. Not real big helical, just kind of a little, a little offset. So that's kind of how the arrow is set up. Um, so I knew what I kind of wanted, um, the length that I like that, so certain length arrows are going to have a certain trajectory. And for me, around that 31 to 32 inch arrow is what I like to kind of see in a, in a sight picture. And it keeps my gaps really close to the same, as long as my arrows aren't 200 grains different from each other, right? So if I'm shooting a, a comp arrow at 297 grains and then I'm shooting a 560 grain hunting arrow the trajectories are going to be massively different um, but for a hunting arrow if I'm shooting say a 490 grain arrow uh, versus a 550 grain arrow the trajectories as long as I keep the arrow length the same or close to the same the gaps are going to be really close to the same as well so that's not going to change hardly at all uh, for me it doesn't anyway so I knew uh, kind of what I wanted um, so I started out the tune with 125 grain heads. Um, that yielded out to be a pretty, it, it was still pretty stiff at 125. And I thought it may be um, with fletched arrows and 125 grain heads, I could get them uh, shooting okay. Um, okay enough to where I, I went in the woods with the bow a couple times. I knew I could hit where I needed to within that 20 yard range, but I still wasn't happy with it. Um, so I started uh, messing around with heavier point weight. So I went to 150s. Uh, 150s yielded a little bit better. Um, so uh, and on the bear shaft for a right-handed shooter, if you're shooting um, bear shafts and you're stiff, then your knock is going to fly to the right. 
and you're going to impact to the left, right? So for a left-handed shooter, it's going to be completely opposite. But for me, my knock was flying to the right. I was impacting left, probably three to four inches, maybe five inches with the 125 grain heads, which is pretty, pretty unacceptable um, if you know how to tune hardly at all. Um, you can really fix that pretty easily. So what I started doing, I could have fixed that two ways. I could have bought longer arrows of the instincts where they weren't cut as much. If I'd have added two more inches to that arrow, it would have had a little bit more flex to it. And the 125 grain heads would have been a lot better, but I didn't want to do that. So I went and started messing with my point weight. So I went to 150s. It got a little better. I went from about five inches impact and left to maybe three, right? Three inches, not, not, not as bad. Um, I knew 175s were probably gonna make a big change. And of course I, it did. Um, I went from impacting three inches left to impacting pretty much left of the 11 ring on my 3D target, which not too bad, but I still had a little bit of that knock, that knock uh, right flight which if you know anything about hunting the key for hunting is penetration so the straighter you can get that arrow in flight and the less it's having to correct itself the more energy that arrow is going to have to penetrate your game so if you can get a bear shaft flying all the way to the target dead straight and then you put feathers on that thing you're going to have a really good arrow that's flying dead straight at your game so how i do that a lot of times in the old in days of old i would take before uh, I learned this trip from Mr. Trevor is I would take a bear shaft and I would I would leave it a hair weak That way when I put the feathers on there, it would pull it pull it perfect Well, you don't really have to do that. So what you do is you take a, 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 a Fully fletched arrow ready to go you weigh it Then you take your bear shaft you weigh it and then you put the amount of tape you need on the back side of it to mimic the weight of your fletched arrow that way when you shoot your bear shaft, all you have to do is make sure that bear shaft's flying dead straight out of the bow to the target. And that's it. Throw feathers on there, you're done. So I knew 175s, my shaft was still flying just a bit to the left. And I knew 200s would probably make them fly great. So I went in, got 200 grain heads. Sure enough, I put the 200s on there, arrow flies dead straight to the target. I put 200 grain air of heads in my fletched arrows and you'll see the results. I've got two groups, all of them smashing 10 rings, uh, except well the first group I got, a, got them a little bit, they're a little bit right of the 10 ring and I had to change the can of my bow just a little bit and it brought them right back in the center. But everything is nice and tight and all I did to tune was change point weight to get my arrow flying from my bow to target dead straight. It's really not a hard concept to do once you figure it out and once you do it a couple of times, you'll really see the result. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot a bear shaft with a 125, a 150, a 175, and a 200, and I'm gonna show you what the differences are and what they look like, how they impact the target, and how simply changing point weight makes the impact of the arrow go from left to center. Here we go. All right, guys. We're going to start with the 200 grain point, since that's what's on the bear shaft. Then we're going to step down uh, in point weight, which will in turn uh, make the shaft stiffer and start making your impacts move to the left. All right, right there in the center of the ten ring. See my knock down there, right there. All right, we're gonna put the 175 grain on and uh, see what we get. Okay, 175 grain head. Um, what you're gonna notice is the 175s and the 200 grain points on this bear shaft impact roughly the same. Uh, the 175 is just a hair bit more left than the 200 but what i didn't like about the 175 is the bear shaft flew more knock right which i wanted to clean that up a little bit just to increase my penetration you know potential So 
I got my gap a little better that time. And you'll see that I'm down the middle, but it flew not as clean as the 200. So we're gonna go to the 150 and you'll see it start moving more to the left. All right, here's the 150. Okay. Now you'll see it's moving more to the left of the ten ring. And it flew pretty knock right all the way down. So it's moved over from the 200, it's moved three inches over. All right. We can put the 125 on there and we'll see how it flies. All right, here's the 125. Exactly what I was expecting to. You see how that 125 impacted in that shoulder? So you see it did you didn't get much difference from 175 to 150, but you go from 150 to 125 and you see the difference at the impact there just by changing the point weight. So I was on the I was on the left side of the 10 ring with the 150. I was on the left side of the 11 ring with the one 75 and I was on the right side of the one of the 11 ring with the 200 but the arrow flight was better it was better with the 200 grain head so that is essentially what you're looking for in my opinion when you're trying to final tune or fine tune is not where the arrow is necessarily impacting because I've, can, I've had tunes to where I was really weak and really stiff and I can get them to impact center by manipulation. But I want them to impact center or right there, right or left of the quarter of center with a straight arrow flight. That way when I add my fletching, everything's really copacetic and really good. So I'm gonna go get these arrows and hope you enjoy it. Fletched arrow, two shot group and you'll see how they fly. Y'all shoot straight, God bless. All right, first group of my fletched arrows after bear shaft tuning. So after you bear shaft tune, what you're really looking for is you want to watch that arrow fly fletched and see if you're getting any porpoising. If it's porpoising, there's something still wrong with your tune. You're getting contact somewhere. things are hitting hard too. Something else you can look for if something's not right with your tune, if you're hearing a noisy arrow in flight flying to the target, then it's really having to correct itself, which will be noisy. me I hit a little bit to the right there
right, not bad. Now, I always try to aim kind of off that shoulder. I don't like to contend with it. So I've got one bad error right here, kind of like toward the liver. But the rest of them are right there behind the tin ring. About, about right there, center lung. So I would like them just about another inch, probably more to the left. But I can play with a little bit of brace height and possibly maybe a toothpick behind the uh, side plate. And I can move those that center shot over just a little bit for this one piece bow. Group number two. Groups are 20 yards. Right up in there. right there with it. So instead of putting any kind of toothpick, I just changed the can on my bow a little bit. So I didn't can it as much and my arrows are impacting just a little bit more to the left. It's also another thing you can do to make your arrows impact a little bit differently is change a little bit of the can on your bow. They are flying fantastic. Oh yeah. And I and I noticed the closer I got to the good tune, to the proper tune, the quieter the bow gets. Yes, sir, buddy. All of them dead straight down the middle. And that last area was just a speck high, but still top of the tin ring. Sweet. All right, well, I hope this helps somebody that's just getting into traditional archery, trying to tune their bows and kind of not knowing where to start. Um, one piece bows for me, really easy to tune because there's not a whole lot you can do. You can set your knock height, your brace height right, and then you can just start bear shafting. And as long as you're close with the spine of the arrow you need, you literally only have to change point weight normally and possibly trim the shaft a little bit one way or the other. But if I'm really close with my with my with the right spine arrow, I can usually take my point weight and go up or down and get it to where I need to. And that's exactly what I did with this. So it was really easy. It took me about 15 minutes really between all the takes to get it to where I think it's ready to go hunt with. So all we gotta do is strap on the right broadheads, make sure they fly right, and get in the woods. So I'm gonna get in here, get some supper going, and uh, get out of this dreary weather. But anyway, this is Paul Helms. Uh, love y'all, shoot straight, God bless. All right, guys. Um, in closing, I just wanted to add this little snippet. When you're tuning your bow, you need to be 100% honest with yourself. Uh, there's not going to be everybody out there that can tune a bow the way that some of us can tune. Um, we've been shooting a long time. I've been shooting, I say a long time, but I've been shooting 
a lot, a lot in a short amount of time, rather. Uh, so I've been at it about five and a half years now, and I've shot thousands upon thousands upon thousands of arrows through bows, traditional bows, over them five and a half years. And I have come to the conclusion that if you're not consistent with your release, you're going to have a very, very hard time bear shaft tuning. It doesn't mean you can't tune a bow. That just means maybe bear shafting is not going to be the way you need to go about it. Um, there's ways you can do it with just fletched arrows, which is what I call group tuning. So you start close, you start shooting groups, walking back, watching which way the groups start shifting. Then you can start changing point weight that way and start moving your groups around left and right with point weight or trimming the arrow type thing. Um, but you need to be honest with yourself. So there are several shots that I edited out in here that they weren't good shots. So I'm not gonna put them in the evaluation of what an arrow is doing in my tuning process if I know the shot wasn't good because the information is flawed. So you can't use it. You gotta make sure that you're evaluating your tune with 100% or 90 to 100% uh, good executed arrows. If not, then your tune's going to be off. Your tune might look decent one day with 80% effectiveness, and then the next day when you're 75, it's going to be crazy. Or when you go 85% effectiveness and then one day you're shooting lights out, then your tune's going to be way off the other way. So you need to be making sure that when you're tuning your bow, you're, 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 you're effective, most effective by being honest in the evaluation of how well the shots broke and how well you executed the shots. So uh, that is going to be huge at how well you tune. So I just wanted to put that in there. I don't know. I might have put it in another clip in this. I may not. I can't remember what all I said, honestly. But uh, it'll come out, and I hope it helps. And if you have any questions, as always, hit me up, and I'll help any way I can. All right. Peace out.